I need to find myself out here. Two hundred kilometers should do the trick. Stay here. Very special. Very special place. Hey folks, how are you? Joe here. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm really excited to share it with you and we're about to jump into part two. Right after I give a huge shout out to my sponsor for the video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen your existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. There's everything on here. I just typed in camping and there is 74 results. Campfire cooking, ultimate crash course to living on the road, professional outdoor nature photography, and that's another thing. You can type in photography and learn how to take better pictures with your DSLR, video making, tons and tons of things on here. I personally am interested in writing. I want to learn how to write and publish my first book. So you type in writing. First thing that comes up, writing and publishing. And I've already done this now. I'm about to take this course. The first one that comes up is the one that I want. It's called Writing, Publishing, Marketing, and Selling Your First Book. It's by John W. Hayes. It's 43 minutes long. The reviews look really good to me. Exceeded uh, expectations met, 52% exceeded, 48% yes. So anyways, looks like a good one for me. I want to turn my camping journals into a book one day. And this goes from right from the beginning to all, all the way to getting it published. So super interested in how to write it the whole nine yards. So another thing about Skillshare that's very cool is that it's curated specifically for learning. That means there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. So Skillshare is going above and beyond. The first thousand subscribers of mine to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So again, make sure you check out the link in the description. Be quick, the first thousand get a month free trial. So thanks again to Skillshare for going above and beyond. I've used your product before, I really enjoy it, and I'm actually really stoked on this writing thing. So thank you very much. Thanks for sponsoring the video. Thanks to you guys for watching this, and on to part two. Good morning. What a gorgeous morning. It's 6.30. I slept all the way through the night again. Lots and lots of sleep lately. It's not a bad thing. I'm just going to do oatmeal today and uh, try to get on the water as soon as possible. Looks like it'll be a warm one, not a cloud in the sky. Time to get going. It's 8.20 and we're leaving camp two. Good camp, feel good. It looks like it's gonna be a good day as well. That was a decent camp for sure. I bet you it was even nicer before it burned, but that was plenty nice. We got a little bit of ways to go, and then you guessed it, a portage. <laughs> I'll probably troll on the way down, see what I can see. 
feeling real good. Pretty tight in here. Beauty. Oh, it's just too small to fit through, I think. Just too small to fit through with this boat. There's no way. <laughs> Super shallow in here, like a foot deep. Muck bottom. Looks pretty moosey actually. I should probably be quiet. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm supposed to go that way. I gotta hop over this little piece of land to get back into the river system, but uh, I can't find a portage. It's just right there though. I know it's right there. I can see it on my GPS and the map. So I'm just gonna walk through this grass, see how long it takes me to get there. I got my big backpack, camera, map, fishing rod, and life jacket this time. It's pretty deep, pretty thick in here. But I found the lake, sorry, the river rather. Yep, found it. First time I ever lost my yoke. I gotta go back to my camp. I have to go back to where I started at today and hope that I can find my yoke there. I'm gonna leave my other backpack and my camera there. I gotta come back this way anyways. Son of a gun. Okay, I got my food, I got my water, my, my map. Oh man, that sucks. All right. Damn it. Say goodbye to any progress made. All right, well, I took about a half an hour. Let's go see if it's here at the camp. I really, really hope it is. Because if it's not, that means I'm doing a lot more backtracking or I'm doing a huge trip with no yoke. And I do not want to do that. Please let the yoke be here. Oh, please let my yoke be here. I don't see it. Oh, hello, yoke. Thank you. Thank you. Believe it or not, I have never done that before. I know it's hard to believe. But anyways, all right. Gotta get back over to where we were. I gotta eat something. I was I put the pedal to the metal on the way here. And that was uh, draining.
Man, that's overwhelming. The smell. Beautiful. Whew, it's nice because I need something nice on this portage. Woo, 200. Seems short. Oh, there it is. There is the end. I'm just about to start complaining. Look at that. Beautiful lake. Beautiful lake. I haven't had a fish all day and I got into this first lake I've been on out of the river. I literally switched out to my Toronto Wobbler, the old faithful silver spoon. I threw it in and I, to, to, to troll and then I started to paddle and I thought I got a snag and I got a bite like within a second. So this guy, it might be a pike actually, I don't know. It's, it's got a good bite to it. Oh yeah, a decent pike. Oh, yeah! Decent pike. Pretty colors. This is the normal scenery of what I've been paddling in for the past three days. Burned. Even on this island here. And just in front of me, the way that I'm going, look. It's all trees. No burn. You can actually see the line right there. Where the burn stopped. Oh, bam, son. What a sight. Just a thick, healthy forest after two and a half days of being in the burn. I've been making my way along. I have a 450 meter portage here, which has been the longest of the trip so far. And then a 65 right after that. And I think I'm in the, in the clear for the, after that, until my camp. I think I'm gonna camp on a lake. I shouldn't be too far from it after these ones. Man, this is gorgeous. Full mature forest. Big old moose in the water. After I stopped recording, I just kept paddling slowly and didn't say anything. And he was kind of running alongside on the shore and I could see him pretty good. Good size. Man, 
this is really, 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 really pretty in here. Like, this is a beautiful little spot. I'm so, so happy to see this. Like, uh, there was some pretty stuff in the past couple days, but I've been looking, waiting for mature forest. Here it is. Spruce and jack pine. Some tamarack I can see too, along the shore. Just so pretty. It's real shallow, four feet. I can see the bottom, muck bottom. Got a Jolly Rancher. Life is good, man. Life is good. I've got all my portaging except for like one little leftover thing. I want to get to a lake. Really hope it's a nice lake like this and not burned. There's nowhere to camp on this. This is more marshy and I still have some, some oomph left in me for today, so we'll keep going on. This is probably the, the happiest I've been on this trip. This is really cool. Two moose, a rainbow, a bunch of fish, eagles. I've seen two eagles. Saw a little pine martin. I got bit again, my, my hand's kind of blown up. So I gotta take some Benadryl, maybe some even some uh, prednisone tonight, we'll see. Get all that. that last spot I was at there, coming through that, that big, uh, it was like a 450 uh, meter portage. I call that big. <laughs> um, it was buggy. Deer flies, black flies, and uh, mosquitoes and bees. My hand got dinged up quite a few times. She's swelling up a little bit. <sighs> Hard not to itch it. Ooh, there's some birch. Way in the back, nice. A really nice sight. It's not too many bugs around at all. Just taking advantage of the sun, a little bit of breeze that there is, drying out everything, cleaning up camp. I'm gonna set my tent up, maybe go try fish. I already had supper, I got here about 3.30. I was starving, I had uh, beans and rehydrated sausages. It was good. I have another meal of it, so I'll show that to you next time I eat it. But let's, uh, I gotta put my tent up and clean up. Finding a flat spot isn't always easy. Even though it looks like pretty open around, a flat spot is difficult to come by a lot of the times. This would look like a really good spot. Now, this is in the shade, it's flat. But if you look up, there's a really good reason why I can't put my tent here. This honestly is one of my biggest fears. People ask me what, I, what scares me in the woods, animals, bears, whatever, wolves, it's that. It's trees falling on me while I'm sleeping. That is holding on by a thread. There's no wind right now, so I'm not worried about sitting under it. And they're still rooted into the ground. But certainly not enough for me to feel comfortable and sleep under it all night long. So we'll go over here. I found a nice spot over here. I like to have a good night's sleep, you know? I don't want to be too slanted, too pokey. I think right here will do just fine. And I'm okay that it's in the sun because uh, it'll dry my tent out quite a bit and I'm not gonna be laying in it until the sun goes down anyways. So once again, this is my Big Agnes Fly Creek UL1. Buddy Dustin from Alone gave this to me like eight years ago, something like that. I've used it forever. It fits me perfectly. It's like basically a glorified bivy. It will be a very sad day when I can't use this tent anymore. And then when I'm done, I like to put all the stuff sacks I have to do with the tent in, the, in together. And sometimes I'll put the sleeping bag stuff sack with this, to put it all together inside my uh, backpack or inside the tent, and then I know where everything is. All right, that's already all dried out. Got a nice taut pitch. A nice taut pitch today. Check it out, I found a beach. 
pretty big too. So just paddling down to the other side of the lake, which actually turns out to be quite the paddle. Uh, Bruce, the Wabakimi Outfitters uh, owner, marked on the maps there's good fishing down here. So I figured, yeah, I got plenty of time to come out and fish. I've already caught two pike and a walleye on my way to the good fishing spot. So we'll see how it is there. Uh, I'm already happy with the success of the, tra of the journey just to the spot. So all is well. That beach is the icing on the cake. I think we're gonna go to a little like narrows. It looks like a narrows. I'm not sure if it's a rapid or not. I don't think so. Some narrows where there should be some walleye in there. If I get a decent sized walleye, like not too big, not too small, I'll keep it and uh, we'll go back and fry it up for a nighttime snack. Sounds like a plan, eh? That beach though is super inviting. Super inviting. Man, there's not a sound except for the buzzing of insects, the paddle, and a bird or two here or there. What a pretty peaceful spot. The old fishing spot does not disappoint. We got ourselves a little snack sized walleye for tonight when we get back. Um, he's dispatched, I'll, I'll deal with them all when we get back. But uh, yeah, I threw my little Cleo in and got him first cast. Send it. It's supposed to be a campsite on this uh, island. Then I might go check it out and then start slowly paddling back. It's gonna take a while to get back anyway, so. This is that island site. Pretty nice actually. Very shady, which is awesome right now. Nice fire pit. view. Very nice sight. I got another little walleye. Small guy, he's going back. I don't need any, any more than what I have. Look at this. This is a wall, a pike eating a walleye that I caught. I caught, a, I caught a walleye and there's a pike munching on it. Look at this. <laughs> see if I can land him. This is crazy. He's chomping. It's a big pike too. <laughs> that is hilarious. Look, I caught that walleye and the pike grabbed him. Oh my goodness, I've never had that. Oh, he's right there. He just get all down. I've always heard about that happening. That is pretty cool, man. That that while I jumped off and the pike grabbed him after he jumped off. That is so cool. I'm back at camp and there is an insane amount of dragonflies. Like, I've, these are all dragonflies that you see. No joke. I'm not complaining, I'm happy for them. They take care of the bugs. But I've never seen so many. We're losing light. Temperature's dropping. I got a lot of stuff to deal with. Still gotta fillet that guy. And get a fire going and cook him. This night is unreal. Unreal. Crush up some dill pickle crispers and use that as batter to deep fry my fish in. Go boat, son. Crush these up without getting too much wood into them.
it looks like the crispers is burning right away. I really hope that's not the case. Oh yeah it is. Oh well, maybe not, just browning? Okay, I can deal with browning. Okay, tell me that doesn't look good. Man, I was kind of concerned at first. I thought the crispers was gonna burn, but it just kind of browned on it and didn't char at all. So, some lemon up on that piece. Woo, okay. What a great day. Oh man, I even looked over here. I haven't even looked over there, I should say. It's all orange. Big old crescent moon. This place is amazing. Okay, first bite. I really, really hope it's good. I can't taste much of the crispers. It's good though. Definitely tastes good. Mm. Miss Vicky salt and vinegar chips next time. It's almost 11. Look how bright it is. Almost 11 o'clock. It is good. It just doesn't taste like the pickle at all. That poo's kind of dead. It's not a waste anyways. It's good to find out it didn't work. It didn't work great. Now I know. It still tastes good. <laughs> Alright folks, day three is a wrap. Great day, and I'm off to bed. I'll see you in the morning. Hello, it's been a good morning. I had breakfast, it's a nice day already, and I'm getting everything packed up. And I thought, while I'm doing that, I might as well show you all the gear I brought for this 200 click, 10 to 15 day solo excursion. I always have lots of questions about gear, and there's a little bit more because of my duration of my trip. So, some of the things are the same, some things are redundancies, some of the things are extras. I have two backpacks. The way I'm doing it is I have my very heavy load in this dry bag, and that goes on the portage before the canoe. It goes by itself with a camera in my hand, a pole in the other hand, and my life jacket. And then after that's done, I go through with the lighter bag, which isn't much lighter, maybe only a few pounds lighter, uh, with my lighter bag and my canoe, the paddle and other pole. So, I have things in my backpack like, this is my sleeping bag. I have a full sleeping bag in here rated to negative two Celsius and I have an under quilt rated to like zero or something along those lines. My thinking behind this was I brought my hammock to chill in if it's hot or if it's buggy or if it's raining or whatever or, or just if I need to lay down I don't want to lay on the ground or potentially sleep in if there's not a good flat spot on the ground at one of my camp spots so if I need this to sleep in, I need something underneath me even though it's spring going into summer it's still chilly at night so the under the under quilt and here can double as my under quilt for this, and then I can put my sleep inside my sleeping bag and I'm totally good in there with that and a tarp. Or when I'm sleeping in my tent, my top quilt, or sorry, my under quilt can be used as a secondary top quilt for extra warmth or to level out my ground where it's uneven or whatever. It's not much extra weight and it seems to be doing pretty good for me. I'm happy I brought this set up. My hammock, super lightweight hammock. I've got Big Eggless Fly Creek UL1, small tent, very, very small tent with its poles. And these poles just get slid down the side of the backpack. So really, my whole big thing for my tent is this. 
That's why it's hard for me to switch out from a tent setup to a hammock setup. So this and this with a sleeping pad and a sleeping bag all times of year or a hammock and a tarp and an under quilt and a top quilt, which seems to be a bit bulkier in my opinion. Anyways, so this is a big tarp that you saw me use so far and this is a smaller black tarp. I could have just got away with one, but in my preparation for this trip, there was a ton of rain in the forecast. It is what it is. I wanted to be more careful. I wanted to be able to have a camp where I can have my hammock up or cooking under this one and my, my, my tent under this one or something along those lines. Regardless, it's not much extra weight, but all of the extra weight does add up together. It's a, it's a heavy load. Two tarps, both by UGQ Outdoors, amazing tarps, and you've seen them in use. So we've gone through sleeping pad. Oh yeah, I didn't do that one. That's why uh, Thermarest New Air X-Therm, always use this one. Uh, it's probably gonna be due for a new one soon. So I've done tent, hammock, sleeping bags, tarp, tarps. Got my chair, my trusty Helinox chair. My little Cedar Summit pillow. I've got two big food bags. They both weigh the same. They're heavy. Other than that, I also have this as a food bag for the day. So I don't have to dig into these big guys. In here, I have power, sta uh, power station stuff. I bought a big Goal Zero Sherpa to charge my batteries while I'm out here. This is a big, heavy product. Okay, heavy. I also have my AC for charging my uh, camera batteries. We got a head mount, a secondary charger, and a cord. Oh, a couple cords in there actually. Secondary power bank bag where I have my GPS batteries, batteries for my big camera, lights, SD cards, things that I need to have to make a video. All this is just for video purposes. It's probably eight pounds. Well, actually, with including my camera and my tripod and everything, I'm well over 10 pounds easily for just filming stuff. But it's part of the reason I'm out here. So there we go, camera stuff. First aid, Hidden Woodsman first aid, straightforward. Possible's pouch, it's got like headlight, fillet knife, repair kit for the canoe a bear horn, a uh, compass, extra sunglasses, knife sharpening kit, just possible as pouch. Clothes, because this is fringe weather, I brought a little bit extra clothes. This is overkill. But again, if it rained the whole time, I would need it. I, ju I just would need it. And uh, I would rather have it than not on a trip like this. Agua Canyon Boreal 24, killer saw. Just stellar, amazing saw. Gransfors Brooks Outdoor Axe, amazing, lovely axe. I've used a lot and uh, will continue to. I love this. And One Tree Leather made the uh, axe mask for me. Amazing piece of kit. Joe Robinette Cup, a little bit of extra for cooking. I've got my normal cook kit here. Solo stove, or sorry, Bush, not Solo Stove, Bush Buddy Solo Cook Kit, titanium. A hank of paracord. Camp shoes equipped with socks already in them. This has been a good setup, nice and light Adidas. My journal my mommy got for me for my birthday last year, or this year, thanks mommy. When I turned 37, The Lonely Land by Sigurd F. Olson, my book. A full pack of baby wipes. One leather glove for dealing with the hot fire in the pot and everything, necessary, absolutely necessary. Another cook kit with a grill, a frying pan, Filet knife, uh, plates, a spork, and a spatula. My one puffy jacket, rain pants, raincoat, water, be free water, just a, uh, a garbage bag to protect water, uh, my stuff from getting wet. My maps that are becoming invaluable from Bruce at Wabakimi Outfitters, nice AquaQuest map holder. My GoPro, my main camera, my Goal Zero, my canoe, my fishing tackle. I've got a lot of gear. 
what I everything I'm wearing, my belt my phone for GPS, my watch, my Anson belt, my boots. I got lots and lots and lots of gear with me. I feel like I have too much gear and that's probably the reason that I lost or forgot my uh, yoke yesterday at the camp. It's because there's so much to, to keep track of. But anyways, that's my stuff. I'm sticking to it. It's 8.30 almost. Time to get this packed up and get on the water. It's gonna be another hot one it seems. That's all right. Day four. That's weird. This one only dives to eight feet and I'm out pretty far. I feel like I got a snag. Huh. Yeah, she's hitting bottom. That's weird. Bottoming out at eight feet over like 100 meters off the shore. Anyway, we're just going to paddle down back to where we were paddled last night, that island there, and uh, continue on from there. We've got a 400 meter portage after that, which is pretty decent size for this trip. So bring it on. I am ready. These last three days, today's day four, last three days flew by. I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, I believe. Tonight, I was supposed to get to where I'm getting to tonight on night six, and I'm getting, or day six, and I'm getting there on night four. So, a little bit ahead of schedule. But I haven't been rushing. Only been traveling about six hours a day. So, anyway, more paddling. More paddling to come. I'm gonna get a fish here pretty soon. I can feel it. I can feel it. Fishy in my bones. Told you, this is not even a minute after I shut the GoPro off. Hit hard. Hit hard. It's gotta be a pike. Feels like a decent size one by the fight but who knows Ain't the size of the fight in the pike something like that this is a good lure I'll show you what it is after but I've been hitting them hard ever since I put it on last night oh yeah bud He was a decent sized pike. Um, it's happened a couple times now where they've swallowed a little bit too far down. It's taken me a bit to get it out. And they've, they've all lived, but it's just, it's, I don't like it. So I pinched the barbs on the back one, on the back hooks at least that way. Um, I don't know. I still need some help with barbs, but hopefully, like it's been the back one that's been getting caught on them both times. So hopefully with it pinched, uh, it'll be able to just slide out easier. Anyways, they're pretty tough fish and they've both lived. It's okay. I just, if I want to keep doing it, I don't want to like keep hurting fish for no reason. Uh, bad shad, eight and a half feet. It dives too. It rattles. Anyways, it's not like the trout in here or anything. Pike, but still, it's, uh, this is only day four. And if I keep catching fish the whole time, I'd rather not be injuring them before putting them back if I'm not eating them all, which I'm not eating them all. And it hasn't been every fish. It's been only like two or three out of freaking, I think I've caught like 20 fish so far. So it's all good. Just trying to be a little bit more conscious of it, and I am. Off we go. See the water. 
Okay. Oh, and a breeze. Nice. Nice. Looks like he's been in a couple battles there. He's got some war wounds on him. Just came off that portage into a little bit of a rapid and a couple casts later got myself a walleye. Alright, on we go. So I'm on another river system now. I'm gonna follow this into a big big lake. Whitewater Lake. We're gonna camp on Whitewater Lake tonight and I might make a, a rest day tomorrow. There's a pretty cool old uh, cabin. I wanted to check out a series of cabins. This old eccentric inventor Wendell Beckwith lived up here. I'll get the exact info for you but a while ago and thought this was the center of the universe and uh, has some really cool cabins anyway, some dug into the side of the hill and everything that I've wanted to check out ever since I heard about it. So they're on white water on an island. So that lake is huge. It'll probably take me a couple days to paddle across it. But tonight I imagine I'll get to the mouth of it, set up a base camp, and then uh, Either stay at that site or only move a little ways and check out that cabin and hang out there for the day. I saw a couple really cool examples of great parenting just maybe an hour ago. The first one was a mother and father goose, Canada goose with like six babies. Not very young, but still had their downy feathers. Not, not uh, pretty, pretty young still and they saw me coming and one of them, I assume the mom, took the geese, took the baby geese up onto the shore. Well, the, the felt, I assume the father, swam the opposite way and started quacking at me, honking at me like crazy, nonstop, honk, 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 until I was well out of range. And then they all got back into the water and followed the one that was honking at me away. I thought that was really cool and it made me miss my kids. And then I come to the end of the portage and there's a mother duck. Again, I assume the mother duck with a bunch of babies. And she starts pretending she's drowning. She swims away from her babies and starts flapping in the water like I've never seen before, like struggling to swim or struggling to, yeah, whatever they do, waddle in the water. Like a lot of commotion and I just stood and watched and she did that for a long time and every time her babies tried to get near her she would run away from them and flap around obviously trying to get my attention to go to her and not the babies. I think people need to take a lesson from animals when it comes to parenting. The babies are the most important thing regardless. Myself too, I'm not preaching here, I'm, I'm talking about personal personal growth, personal experience, personal thoughts. First real time I've uh, felt a little homesick. More so just missing my family than anything. You know, with everything the way it's been, we've all been at home together. You know what I mean? Emmy's not at school, I'm not gone away. We've all been at home together, living together, and it took a while to get used to it for me because I'm barely never there and Emmy's always gone to school. But man, once I did, I loved it having game nights and going fishing with Emmy, lots of fun stuff. She's so alike me, she's so, so similar to my personality. <laughs> poor Will, <laughs> poor, poor Will. Getting the hang of these walleye, I think. I saw a spot where I thought looked good. And I cast my little Cleo. I messed around in the water playing with it a little bit and then lo and behold, walleye.
<laughs> Good thing I didn't want to keep them. All right, that's a few fish today already too. I think uh, a pike and two walleyes. A pike and two walleye walk into a bar. Pike don't walk. Fish don't walk, silly. Into a bar. Anyways, having fun, can you tell? That one's a snag. Another walleye at the end of the lake. Peace. Man, I uh, keep dunking my hat in the water. It's pretty hot. So yesterday, my elbow started acting up. If you guys remember my five day solo Algonquin trip years ago, when I had the black eye and uh, it rained the whole time. I, I messed my elbow up um, paddling against current into the wind hard for days. And it's been okay since then. This is honestly like, I don't even know how many, five years ago. It's gotta be five, at least five years ago. Uh, I've been on many canoe trips since. And I don't know if it's the weight of the boat, the extra weight of this boat trying to maneuver it or what, but it is, uh, right now it's throbbing. I feel good otherwise. Like, uh, I feel good otherwise. Just get into this through this big lake onto this little stretch uh, before the portage. This is a big lake, and on the map, this is one of the smaller lakes. So I'm sure I'm gonna come to some monster lakes on this trip. Did that little guy. Actually, a good eating size pike. Hmm, I wish I didn't just have lunch. I've been waiting to eat a pike. Okay, let's see if my magic with the barbs worked. One's out, one's out, one's out. Okay, back one's not in, which is good because that's the one I removed the barbs on. Okay, no harm, no foul. Perfect eating size pike, like I said, but he's going back because I just had lunch. Ready? <laughs> it's so hot. It's so darn hot. It's gotta be pushing a hundred. Thirty. Something. I'm just give my arm a break. This sucks. I really did not foresee this being an issue. It's right in the, between the two like knuckles of it. It like, feels like the tendon in there. Right, ah, right there. Yeah, right there. There's this nice rapid here. I'm real sweaty. I've already mapped it out. If I jump in here, the current will carry me down and I'm gonna have to swim back up to get to my canoe here on this little raw. Just to get the grass, the perspective here. So I'll have to swim up against current, which is the only thing I don't know if I'll be able to do. But I got my life jacket on, the worst comes to worst, I'll swim to shore and pick my way along until I get back over here. All right, let's do it. Oh, my hat, my sunglasses. Perfect. Oh, that was good. That was refreshing. 
Almost lost my hat and my sunglasses though. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. No hat, no sunglasses this time. Ready? We're jumping in there. Woo! Oh, the old float. Get back to shore, bro. Get back to shore, you can do it. Oh, this isn't bad at all. This is fine. I can just hang out in here, man. I feel like Kyle wearing my life jacket though. Ah, swept away, swept away. Oh no. <laughs> we got it, we got it, we got it. Let me have a little water in my ear. Okay, well, every square inch of me soaked to the bone now, which is good. I feel so much better. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. It's not even that cold, the water, at all really. It's totally tolerable. Deer flies are having a heyday though. What a cool spot, man. Swimming and fishing for a nice walleye. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> wild in Wabakimi. Becoming wild in Wabakimi, he is. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. That was about as perfect as you can get. And there's a bee on my lens. Get from here. Came up on this portage. <clears throat> Some moose bones here. They've been out in the sun for some time, stark white. There's still some tendons in between the vertebrae. This is a very pretty spot. Real tight in here. Very fishy, 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 fishy. I slowed right down after lunch, I'm glad I did. I was, uh, I was hurting myself. So much burn in every sense of the word.
Back for the big camera. Look at the color of that lichen or algae or moss, whatever it is, on this rock. I thought it was like a, a canoe from far away, how orange it is. Man, that is bright, bright orange. <laughs> This is my last portage of the day. It's like 5.30. It's getting late and I'm getting tired and hungry. I'm gonna try and fish at the uh, rapids at the end of this. And if I do get a walleye or a pike of eating size, I will bring it to camp with me and cook it up for supper. I'm so hot, I need to take a dip in the water again. It's real bad for black flies. They're not everywhere, just usually on the portages and sometimes at camp. Woo! All right, this has the makings of a really good campsite. It's marked on my map as one, so let's go check it out. Ooh, it's looking real inviting from here. Real inviting. Okay, very nice. Some shade, hang in the hammock. Some flat ground, breeze. Yep, oh, nice fire pit too. Okay. Home. And just like that, dinner is served. We're gonna get this guy dispatched and cook, cooked up before he gets away. Oh, I'm so hungry. 6.30. Uh, yeah, the first thing I'm doing is eating. I've already filleted my fish. I got two nice fillets, that's probably the the biggest walleye I've kept so far. I just gotta get a little, a little fire going in my, in my uh, bush buddy and fry up my fish with some fish crisp in that. Uh, two decent sized fillets. I, I personally like to cut them up first before uh, I cook them so that, I don't know, so that I know that everything's cooked. If I leave them big, maybe they're not cooked in the middle, I don't know, maybe I'm paranoid. I'm just going to cut them big to big chunks this time. This is a good amount of meat. I might have to cook this in installments just because my frying pan's not big enough all right i ended up cutting it up a little bit smaller once it was in there again <laughs> i still have a few pieces to go but I am a hungry boy, and this is going to go down really good. A little bit of salt, don't mind if I do. Maybe even some pepper.
Love ya. <laughs> Cheers. Mr. Wally. Well, it was a good day. Longest day so far. Probably the hottest day so far too. What did I say I got here at 6.30? Yeah, just before 6.30. And I left at 8.30. Oh man, that's so good. Oh, I needed this. I needed this. All right, well, I still have a few pieces to cook up after. I will, uh, I'm going to sit here and eat this till this is done, man. I need some food in my life. Mm. I feel like I might be getting in the rhythm. These portages, they're short, and they are relatively flat, but they're kicking my butt. I don't know if it's me having to find them. Maybe they're, it's because they're in the sun and they're, like a lot of them are in old burn, in the sun, full of bugs. I don't know. But there's not that many of them and they're taking me a long time. I know that much. It's 20 to 10. I got camp all scored away. The food was good. I sat there for a long time after I ate and I just looked at the map and got a lot of bearing on what's going on and how long it's going to take me to do what and everything. I'll go over that with you later on. But for right now, I'm getting out to go fishing. Uh, before I go to bed. If anything happens, I'll uh, I'll definitely let you know. But I got plans. I got plans after looking at the maps and stuff, so we'll go over that too. Looks like there's some good color out here. We'll go back to the little rapids that I was at and uh, fish and get some sky shots. Can you see the difference on my ring finger? That's not my ring. That's my whiteness. I had to put my ring on this finger because my Hand was swollen up so bad. I'm gonna put it on my necklace soon so I don't lose it, but yeah. <laughs> really nice feel in the air. It's still warm, but there's a breeze. I'm gonna go cast my line in here a few times. I cut off my uh, my line, my best lure that I've been catching all these walleye on. I believe it was a pike. Anyway, I didn't see him, but I switched up. Same setup, little Cleo, just different color, same size, and it worked good. I got a pretty nice size uh, walleye on here. Oh, he's gone. Anyways, it was a decent sized walleye. I actually wanted to get that one in the boat. Normally, I don't really care at this point, but oh. Well. Good walleye, and I'm glad that that lure worked. Sure, it was going to. I got mono on this uh, rod and braid on the other one. I've been trolling with the braid and casting with the mono. Man, what a scene! Oh my goodness, it's just getting more purple. It's getting more purple. I'll show you here in a second. Fishing's pretty hot tonight. Let's see if I can get land this one. Nope. Another walleye. <laughs> oh my goodness. All the better. I don't have to touch them. <laughs> Good fishing. Good fishing here in the wild bikini. What do we got here? Oh, a feisty little walleye. Let's see if I can get this one land this one. Okay, 
Okay, so the third fish in a matter of like, I don't know, 20 minutes, not even, and I was able to land this guy. I'd say that this is uh, one of my best nights yet, if not the best night yet. Oh my drag! I didn't even look. I didn't even look at this. Do you see the dragonflies? Oh man! Oh, <laughs> what a night! Oh my goodness! Every this is a sensory overload. There are so many things, so many awesome things going on. Not a soul around. There's thousands and thousands. They're right above me. They're they're literally right. They're flying like right above me. I can touch them if they let me, which they won't do. Man. Wow. One for the memory. Doesn't that tree just look so spooky? Like, what nightmares are made of right there? These are my dragonfly friends. How silly do I look on a scale of from one to super ridiculously Joe silly. <laughs> I realize that, but hey, it lets me get out here wearing this stuff like this, so I'm cool with it. Just call me Captain Cringe. <laughs> Come on, one more. One more. Just one more fishy, then I'll go back to camp. Give me one more fishy, I know that you can. Some loons freaking singing back up for me. to go. Don't be a pike and snap my line. Nice. Oh, beauty walleye. Beauty walleye. Oh, yeah. Man, this is a nice walleye. Oh, man. Nice. He was feisty. He was feisty. Okay, well, I don't know, man. I'm not really quite ready to go back, to be honest. I'm gonna take a couple more casts here. This place is, uh, this place and time right here is something that doesn't happen all the time. catching these guys again. I mean, actually handling them again. Okay, here he goes. Goodbye. Oh man, there's dragonflies. Have I mentioned the dragonflies? No need to go to bed. No need to get up early. No rush. I worked out. It seems like I'll probably end up taking 14 days to do this trip if I take a, a rest day here or there. Man, 
it's just getting more clear. Well, it's 10.30. I caught more walleye than I can count. So I'm gonna head back. I might make up a little fire. And uh, chill out for another half hour or so. I'm not in any kind of rush to get up tomorrow. I think I will move tomorrow. That's part of my plan. I think I will move spots tomorrow, but not far. Just got on the lake a little bit and prepare to go see uh, Wendell Beckwith's old cabins uh, and all his inventions and knickknacks and whatnot. What's all left there? So, uh, wow, it's a nice sky, isn't it? It's almost 11. Back at camp, the bugs are getting pretty bad. Start this up, hopefully smoke will help keep them down a bit. Probably stay up for about an hour if I can. Then head to bed, set up the tent tonight. I might sleep in the hammock again, I don't know. We'll see. So many bugs, so many bugs. Today was the toughest uh, and the most rewarding. I don't know what the weather is going to be. I can check on my inReach, but I have not checked, and I'm not going to. No matter what it is, it doesn't matter. It will dictate what I do, but we'll just wait and see. I'll do it when it happens if any weather comes in. Mossies. Damn mossies. Adidas camp shoes for the win. All day I dream about portaging. Slogging, slogging. All day I dream about slogging. All right, guys. That's it for tonight. I'll get with you in the morning.